You know, European politics is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Imagine you've been given a large, beautifully wrapped box of assorted chocolates. The anticipation builds as you untie the ribbon, lift the lid, and are greeted with an array of tantalizing options. Now, replace those chocolates with the 44 countries making up Europe, each with its own unique political flavor. Some are sweet, others are bitter, and many are a complex blend of both. This is the European political landscape, a fascinating assortment of democratic systems, ideologies, and leaders. It's a place where the political pendulum swings between left, right, and center, often within the same country. It's a place where the political currents can change as swiftly as the tides of the Mediterranean Sea. Let's dip into this box and pull out an example. Over in the United Kingdom, you have a political system that's a constitutional monarchy with a parliamentary democracy. This means the queen is the head of state, but the power to govern is in the hands of elected officials. Sounds straightforward, right? But don't be fooled. This system has its own unique intricacies and nuances that could make your head spin faster than a Ferris wheel at Oktoberfest. Or let's fly over to France where the political scene is a semi-presidential system. Here, power is shared between a president and a prime minister. A political duo that sometimes harmonizes like a well-rehearsed choir, and at other times, clashes like rival football fans. And we haven't even touched on the European Union, a political and economic union of 27 member states each with its own seat at the table, voice in the discussion, and vote in the decisions. So, as you can see, this box of chocolates we call European politics is filled with a variety of flavors, each more intriguing than the last. Some may leave a bitter taste in your mouth, others might be surprisingly sweet, but each one contributes to the complex and captivating assortment that is the European political landscape. So buckle up folks, we're about to take a wild ride into the heart of European politics. In the world of politics, left, right, and center aren't just directions on a compass. Imagine being at a party, you're standing in the middle of the room, sipping on a glass of champagne when suddenly, a heated conversation breaks out. On your left, you have a group of folks passionately discussing social equality, advocating for the redistribution of wealth and championing workers' rights. They're all about change, and not just the kind you find down the back of your sofa. On your right, there's a different group. They're talking about tradition, free markets, and individual liberties. They believe in minimal government intervention and would rather see a slow-paced, cautious approach to change. They're the type to keep their old Nokia phones because they're just as good as these newfangled gadgets. Then right there in the center you have a group that's watching the tennis match between the left and the right. They're sipping their drinks and munching on canapes trying to find a middle ground. They're not entirely sold on the idea of drastic change, but they're also not clinging on to tradition for dear life. They're the Goldilocks of politics. They like their porridge just right. In reality, of course, these distinctions aren't as clear-cut. The political spectrum is more of a smorgasbord than a three-course meal. There are variations within each of these categories, and individuals may align with different ideologies on different issues. The left-right-center divide is a simplification, a way to make sense of the complex world of politics. But here's a funny thing to consider. Despite our differences, we're all at the same party. We all want what's best for our countries, our communities, and ourselves. We may have different ideas about how to achieve that, but at the end of the day, we're all part of this wild, wonderful, maddening thing called democracy. So next time you're lost, just remember, politics might not be the best way to find your way. Ever been to a circus? Then you're ready for European politics. Picture this, Europe, the grand political circus, where every country is a different act, each more captivating than the last. First up we have Germany, the juggler extraordinaire. Balancing the Eurozone economy, refugee crisis and climate change, all while spinning around in the political arena. An act not for the faint-hearted but they seem to pull it off with a certain German efficiency. Next we have France, the daring trapeze artist. Swinging high above on issues of social justice and international diplomacy, they always manage to land just right, even when the winds of public opinion are gusty. Now let's turn to Italy, the clown of our circus. Known for its revolving door of governments, Italy keeps us laughing with its political slapstick. But don't let the humor fool you, this clown knows how to get serious when the situation calls for it. And then there's the United Kingdom, the escape artist. With Brexit, they've performed the ultimate disappearing act from the European Union. A spectacle that left us all holding our breath wondering what trick they'll pull next. Over in the east we have Poland and Hungary the circus strongmen, 
They're flexing their muscles on the rule of law trying to lift the heavy weights of European Union regulations. Some say they're bending the bar, others think they'll drop it all together. And let's not forget the ringmaster of this circus, the European Union. Guiding all the acts, trying to keep the show running smoothly. Sometimes they crack the whip, other times they're more like a conductor, orchestrating a harmonious performance from a diverse cast of characters. So there you have it. A circus with a twist of politics or is it politics with a twist of circus? Either way, it's a spectacle that keeps us on the edge of our seats, reminding us that in the grand arena of politics, anything can happen. And that, folks, is the Grand European Political Circus. Who said the Wild West was just in America? Welcome to Eastern Europe. Now here's a place where the political landscape can give the old American frontier a run for its money. Just like the Wild West, Eastern Europe is a land of contrasts, where the political gunslingers of yesteryears have given way to a new breed of politicos, who are as unpredictable as a tumbleweed in a desert storm. Let's start with the political saloons, where the power brokers gather. Just like in the Wild West, these are the places where political deals are made, alliances are formed, and sometimes, political careers are shot down faster than a whiskey at high noon. And then, there are the political outlaws, the mavericks who don't play by the rules. They're the ones who ride into town, guns blazing with populist rhetoric, ready to shake up the status quo. They might not always be on the right side of the law, but they sure know how to rally the townsfolk. But it's not all chaos and lawlessness. There are the political sheriffs too, the ones who strive to bring order and stability. They're the steady hands on the reins, guiding their countries through the rocky terrain of international politics. Yet just like in the Wild West, they often find themselves in standoffs with those who prefer a less regulated frontier. And let's not forget the settlers, the citizens who are carving out their lives in this political Wild West. Just like the pioneers of old, they're grappling with the challenges and opportunities of a rapidly changing environment. They're the ones who ultimately decide who stays, who goes, and who leads them into the future. So, whether it's a high noon showdown at the political corral, a gold rush of foreign investment, or a wagon train of progress and reform, Eastern Europe's political scene is as wild and unpredictable as the American West ever was, so saddle up because the Wild West of the East is a ride you won't forget. If politics were food, then Southern Europe would be a five-star restaurant. Imagine Southern Europe as a bustling kitchen, brimming with a blend of different ingredients, each contributing to a flavorful political stew. The chefs, our politicians, are busy at work, each with their own unique recipe for success. Let's start with Italy, the kitchen's pizza station. It's a bit like a pizza margarita, simple at first glance but complex in its flavors. The tomato base represents the strong, traditional values of the populace, while the mozzarella, the country's ever-changing political parties, melts and molds to suit the shape of the pizza. The basil, the country's constitutional referendum, adds a hint of freshness, but also a touch of bitter controversy. Next we move to Spain, the paella station. A medley of ingredients, each representing different political ideologies, simmer together in a large pan. The rice, the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party, forms the base, while the meat and vegetables, the various regional parties, add spice and diversity. It's a dish that requires constant stirring to prevent it from sticking, much like the careful balancing act of Spanish politics. And then there's Greece, the salad station. With its crisp, fresh ingredients, it's a political scene that's always refreshing and never dull. The feta cheese, the government's austerity measures, can be a bit hard to swallow, but the olives, the resilience of the Greek people, add a robust flavor that keeps the salad palatable. Finally, we arrive at Portugal, the dessert station. It's a sweet pastel de nata, a custard tart that's rich and satisfying. The pastry crust, Portugal's stable democracy, holds everything together, while the creamy custard filling, the country's progressive social policies, adds a sweet finish to the political meal. The political kitchen of Southern Europe is full of flavor, spice, and a dash of drama. It's a place where traditional recipes meet innovative culinary ideas, much like the region's vibrant political landscape. So next time you're in the kitchen, remember, Southern Europe's got a recipe for political intrigue. Ever listen to a symphony? Then you've heard the soundtrack of Northern Europe's politics. Imagine, if you will, the political landscape of Northern Europe as a grand orchestral symphony. Each country, a unique instrument, playing its part and contributing to the overall melody. Sweden, the graceful violin, leads with its democratic socialist model, playing a tune of high taxes, comprehensive welfare, 
and a strong commitment to environmental sustainability. It's a melody that resonates through the region, echoed by its fellow string instruments, Norway and Denmark. Finland, the steady drum, maintains a rhythm of pragmatic politics both domestically and abroad. It's a beat that's both consistent and reliable, just like Finland's commitment to social equality and a robust education system. Iceland, the piccolo, may be small, but its notes are high and clear, known for its impressive record on civil liberties, gender equality and environmental protection. And then there's the United Kingdom, the grand piano, a key player with a complex composition. It's a tune that's changed recently, moving away from the European Union's harmony to play its own solo. Yet its influence and the echoes of its notes can still be felt throughout the symphony. In the brass section we find the Baltic states Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. They play a more recent tune having regained their independence from the Soviet Union at the end of the 20th century. Their music is a blend of the old and the new, a testament to their resilience and aspiration towards liberal democracy. Each instrument, each country plays its own melody, but they all contribute to the grand symphony that is the political landscape of Northern Europe. They may not always play in perfect harmony, there may be the occasional discordant note, but together, they create a diverse and dynamic political symphony. So next time you're at a concert, remember, Northern Europe's politics are music to our ears. Well, we've had our fun and games, but what does this all mean? Let's take a step back and look at the big picture, shall we? Imagine, if you will, a grand jigsaw puzzle. Each piece, unique and colorful, represents a different European country. Some are more intricate than others with twists and turns that would baffle even the most seasoned puzzler. But despite their differences, they all fit together to create a larger image, the political landscape of Europe. We started our journey by unwrapping the European political gift box where we found a diverse array of ideologies from the left, right and center. Each ideology like a corner piece of our puzzle is crucial in shaping the overall picture. Then we ventured into the political circus of Europe where party politics and charismatic leaders juggle the issues of the day. These are like the edge pieces of our puzzle creating the framework within which the rest of the picture unfolds. Next, we navigated the wild west of the east where political landscapes are as dynamic and unpredictable as a jigsaw puzzle with missing pieces. But even these gaps contribute to the overall image, adding an element of suspense and intrigue. In the political kitchen of Southern Europe, we found that the recipe for politics is as varied as the cuisine. Like the unique shapes and colors of our puzzle pieces, each country adds its own flavor to the mix. Up north, we listen to the symphony of politics, where the harmony and discord of different ideologies create a captivating melody. These are the centerpieces of our puzzle, bringing everything together and adding depth to the image. And there you have it, folks the grand jigsaw puzzle of European politics. Each piece, though unique and sometimes baffling, contributes to the larger picture. And isn't that the beauty of it all? The diversity, the complexity, and yes, even the chaos, all come together to create a fascinating image. Thanks for joining us on this wild ride.